I don't even know what episode this is, but I know it's up there. It's in the 30s, right? Huh? Just like our ages. Today we have <laughs> Pete, the Spice King, Lauren. You can call him Your Highness, His Majesty. I call him the hardest working man in the spice business. He's right. excited to have you on the show. And uh, like we were talking before the show started, we've had a couple of times where we've tried to get together, but now we've done it. So welcome to the show for the next 25 minutes. Wayne and I are going to say nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm thankful that, that you brought me here. Hopefully we can say some things that will spice up everybody's lives and get everybody in an entrepreneurial mood and living out their best dreams. You've got Love a great it. story. When I met you, oh, oh, God, it's been, I can think in January or even before. I can't remember. I, it, life is a blur. In Florida, <laughs> life stops and it goes a million miles an hour at the same time. But that's true. I, I saw you and I go, well, the guy obviously dresses a lot more cool than I do and he carries it off. But then I, when we started talking, I'm like, this is a guy I want to hang out with. Oh, I know <laughs> this is not true. You and I met a couple of years ago at one of my dinners. My bad. Right. Yeah. Well, we've met a, we've met a few times. Like you say, you know, living in Florida, everything goes a million miles an hour. There's so many events. There's so many um, parties. You know, it's hard to remember where you meet somebody. But we did connect. And, um, we, we wanted to link up and talk yeah, on, Robert, on the... Robert Lozano, who's a mutual friend, introduced you and I a couple years ago. So now I now I feel better. So then I... And I met you and it was cool and everything and you know how life goes on. But then we were at this event back in January, early January, that um, Michelle Hastings was putting on with Women Empowering Women. See, I'm throwing out all the all the great names and people. But uh, tell us a little, you know, I know who you are. I know your story. Tell us a little bit about where you're from, what you've done in life to get you to where you are today, to be the sure. Spice King. And you are the Spice King. You're not the self-proclaimed Spice Man or Spice King. You are proclaimed right. by tens of thousands of retail outlets and hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of customers. So, well, first of all, shout outs to Robert Lozano and Michelle Hastings for connecting us. Those are two great people in the entrepreneurial world. So, if you guys can Google them, go ahead. They're fantastic people, great mentors. Um, but I got my start in in the culinary food because, like, you know. When I was in high school, I heard the expression that you should do what you love to do and you should do it so much that you become great at it. And when you become great at it, then people would be willing to pay for the best. And I always thought to myself, well, if I have to become the best at something, what is it that I love to do? And it was cooking. So I experimented I, I, in cooking. I um, catered. I In high school, I put myself through college by baking cakes to different restaurants. And I thought that, damn, that's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> and so let me find out another way that I can continue in culinary arts, but have a more global impact and a, and a more freer mobile schedule. So then I read that book, The 4-Hour Work Week, and it talked about... Uh, hold on. <laughs> Technical difficulty going on. Oh, look at that. Is, he's just doing that to show us his chair. Is that chair bad or what? <laughs> look, okay, so here's my chair. And you uh, can I'm see my I'm, chair. My CX5. I'm thinking about changing up, but uh, apparently the spice king got pulled away for something extremely important in business. So this sometimes happens, but. Actually, it's never happened. This is another Wayne's World and Kelly first. Isn't this exciting? So welcome back. <laughs> We're gonna undo. Did our did our yeah, did our get? Oh, it's like a fire drill here. Can I go? I'm gonna go outside and then we'll finish the interview. Because I don't know. I don't know when this is gonna stop. Oh, something happened in there. Yeah, I think that's a fire drill. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, yeah, you probably better go. Huh? We can't hear it. So do you have to do you have to evacuate? You can't hear the you can't hear it really? No, no. No. Wow. Okay. So so we're fine. Yeah. Just keep rolling. Okay. Um I left off 
Um, I'm trying to think the last thing I said. Okay, I uh, the, the last four thing. the four hour work week, which I hope none of our people on our company is listening to this. <laughs> yeah, so I read the book, The Four Hour Work Week, and the Four Hour Work Week talk about the benefits of entrepreneurship and setting up your life in a more mobile way. So then I thought to myself, you know, if I start doing cooking videos and teach people how to make ethnic foods and teach them how to use spices and season up their food, great, making ethnic meals, people would buy it. And eventually I'll grow and get into stores and get on TV. So back in 2011, I put my first video up and this is after having moved back to the United States. First, I was working over in United Arab Emirates. And while I was over there, I went over there for a government job. But in my off time, I would um, volunteer with spice companies and spice traders. I would make perfumes. And it really taught me a new technology. So when I came back to America, I ended up going to culinary school at the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York. And at the same time, I put out my first video. The day I put out my first cooking video, I got my first sale. Then I put out my second video, the third video. On the third video, uh, NBC Today Show saw the video. Uh, it was for a, a bar how to make barbecue ribs, and they invited me to cook on um, the Today Show, which was fantastic. I got me an internship at Food Network. I saw how they did behind the scenes. So I was all, all along my journey, I was paying attention to business, how to set things up, how to go global. In 20. 15, I got my first grocery store account. It took me four years, but I got my first grocery store account with Stop and Shop grocery stores. In 2019, I got Walmart, and now we're in over 5,000 stores. And this year, the Kroger, no, we're already in Kroger. We're in Walmart, Stop and Shop, Big Y, Julasco, ATB, Food Line, Kroger, Costco's. This year, we're going into Target, Wakefern, Safeway, and hopefully Publix. That's um, what so we those, want. That's agenda, yes. So it's been a very exciting yet difficult, tumultuous journey, but we're here to stay and we're growing and our, our sites are global. Okay. If you were to ask how we were able to achieve it, it would I would say that a lot of prayer, a lot of dedication, a lot of great people, but also providing great value and really living up to that mantra of being the best in the spice industry and providing the best flavors and, you know, the cream always rises to the top. And so we're going to continually improve and grow. And I think that is the secret. Well, I, you know, where else more can you grow? I mean, it's I guess there's always more markets, but it's just incredible. There's a whole world out there, man. Like, I, I really want to go out to Asia. And uh, we have a brand new scotch bonnet hot sauce. And when I was in China... We did some experiments with the people and, and letting them taste it. They went crazy. I mean, I had lines of people follow me everywhere wanting a hot sauce. When I was in Japan, it was the same thing. Uh, everybody wanted me to make fried chicken for them. In fact, that's where I developed my first spice blend was in Japan, and it was for a fried chicken seasoning. Everybody loved it. So I, I have my sights set on Asia to, to start and also Canada. So. God hey, hey, Keith, Keith, I got I got so many questions. I I know Kelly does too, so I'll <laughs> I don't even know where to start here. Um, I understand we all understand the power of one, the power of focus, you know, the passion, being involved in what we do, you know, all of that. Tell mm -hmm. me about the team. Tell me about the team behind you. So I have a great team. Team, um, and like I said, I, I base it off of that book. But basically, I have a marketing team that when we want to do videos, we'll come together and we'll film them and edit them and put them out. I have a team that does my manufacturing, um, and they're fantastic. I have distribution partners like um, KHE, UNFI, DPI, CNS, Davidson's. These people will come and pick up the spices from our factory and then ship it to all of the stores and then there are all the great store partners um like I said, walmart stop and shop big y julasco hp food line kroger costco fries and newly safeway uh wake fern target so all of us work together to orchestrate the marketing the distribution and the fulfillment, the manufacturing. 
is the orchestration. So how's the quality control been as you've grown? Has that been a challenge? Has it been seamless? No, because I'm very, very militant. And I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a very smiley person, but not when it comes to the quality and integrity of my product. And then I pull out the guns and I pull out the machetes and, right. and war. So I've been blessed. I've had lots of hiccups along the way, as any small business would. But um, you eventually find the people that will do right by you and you stick with them. Hopefully they stick with you and you right. can continue. Yeah, that's what, what, what's been one of the biggest challenges that you've had with with whether it's been distribution or, or the or the factory that's manufacturing your sauces and spices. What, what, what's been a big one? How did it overcome? What was the results? The first the first series of obstacles were. You know, going from being a small online and to getting into my first retail, the first one is usually the hardest. Right. Which was, uh, my first grocery store order was $25,000. And I was like, where in the hell am I going to get $25,000 to manufacture this stuff? And oh my goodness, it was such a an issue right. trying to find capital. And then two weeks, two or three weeks before the order was due, the manufacturing company that I had said that they would not be able to do it. And so I had to scramble around and find the money and find a manufacturer. And it just so happened that I was, I pulled into this barbecue restaurant called Bowlegs in Miami. And I was looking crazy. Like I was looking like a nervous wreck. And the guy said, what's wrong with you? And I said, man, I got the opportunity of a lifetime to finally get into stores. And I don't know how on the hell I've been a manufacturer. It's my manufacturer just, Cancel. He's like, do you believe in God? I was like, hell yeah, I believe in God. He's like, well, so you're going to be all right. I was like, but how? I got it. This stuff is doing a few days. He's like, don't worry, I got somebody for you. So he got on the phone. He called this company in Miami to do it. Um, but at, at the time, I did not have any credit and I did not have, I had, I ended up getting the money from friends and also um, family and also factoring. So the first several years, I made no money because I would have to pay out exorbitantly high interest but I just stayed in, stayed in the game and I said, one day I'll be profitable. So I'm just going to stay in the game and keep it moving. And I ended up living in my parents' garage and I had to sell my car and nobody would know it on the outside, but we were, I was, you know, struggling, but I was operating in complete faith that everything would work out. And then it became an obstacle of, I, I don't want to say racism, but um, a lot of the, manu a lot of that same manufacturing team and a few of the other ones did not believe what I was doing, they would always try to change my recipes. They would always try to change the ingredients, the quality of the ingredients, and I wasn't having it. So I made sure that I was there for every single batch, every single mix. I was over in the in the machines, literally. And um, it was an ordeal. And nobody ever talks about before getting to that point, you know, it was making all the videos, going to all the farmers markets, going to all of the trade shows. I remember one year I didn't have the money to go to one of the largest trade shows in Miami. And so what I did is I signed up as a, as a uh, media person and I brought four people with me and they all held up big spice king signs. I had two women walking behind me carrying trays of spices. And so I ended up being a moving booth and I still got to meet everybody there, but I was able to. <laughs> That's pushing the envelope a little bit. Huh? Wow. Well, pushing the envelope a little bit, but, uh, you know. Yeah. You gotta be a gambler. You gotta be a risk and gamble and stay in the game. And even now it's difficult. Well, I wouldn't say it's, it is difficult because the, as any business would be, but you always have to be, uh, one step, a few steps ahead of the curve. And right. now, you know, you kind of have to pay to play, especially online, at least in my experience now, where, you know, before you can get millions of views. Um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, You know, randomly, you know, I can't remember the word I'm looking for, but randomly you can get millions of views. But now there's algorithms and you have to actually be pay organically is the word I was looking for. Right, right, right. Yep. Climate has changed because so many people are on social media doing recipe, doing cooking videos, doing marketing. 
that you do have to kind of pay to play. So I'm getting ready to start, you know, paying for paid marketing, but we've done all of this growth organically, thank God. Um, and But now we're really going to step it up and go to the next level, make sure that we show up in everybody's faces. That's what my competitors are doing. Right. I have to stay in line. Now you're right. You're two steps ahead of the game and it's, it's tough, but it's, but obviously it's working. And, you know, the best thing you did was you, you did two things. You branded yourself, mm -hmm. but you also deliver a great product. You know, right. you could be the coolest looking spice king in the world, but if people don't like your product, but you also could have a great product, but if you don't know how to bring it to market and, and, and step out in faith and, and be what you, who you've been and made, you know, you were willing to power through it. A lot of the younger people, and you're still young, but the the younger people, they want instant everything. And and they, you know, and I think it's very important for people to hear what you've been through to get where you are today. Yeah. Um, it's not an overnight thing. It's a it's a marathon. And you have to be camp, you have to be very flexible and pliable. You ever heard that story about the the uh the bamboo farmer and his grandson? Uh, I have, I have, and I, I've actually used that story to get into a client. Um, I, I'm very familiar with it. Tell us, uh, tell us again what it is, but Keith, I'm, I'm, I, I've used it. I have. I'll tell you the Spice King version of that story because you know, yeah, story passes somebody's mouth, it comes out differently. But you know, right, Spice. Right. But, so there was this, there was this old man out there in China. You know, he was out there in the middle of you know Shanghai back before it was populated and had all the tall buildings and. You know, they were living like the forest, and he had this little tin house, and his grandson would, would always want to plant bamboo like his other neighbors, but they finally mustered up the money and bought the seeds, and they went out there and planted them. So the, the, the grandson said, listen now, you have to water this every day, no longer how long it takes. Yeah. One day it's going to sprout up, but in the meantime, you better keep watering and yep. keep watering the plant. So a week went by, no sprout, two weeks, month, year. Damn it, Grandpa! Where the hell is my damn bamboo plant? <laughs> He's like, son, corn, keep watering, and one day it's gonna shoot out. Maybe like yep. two years later, it sprouted. But then it sprouted in several weeks. It was as tall as a skyscraper, you know. Yep. And story, although I, you know, I, I twisted the story all up, is the story about patience and perseverance and dedication. And no matter how it looks, you have to stay in your own lane. You have to stay on your own path and you just have to keep doing the work and eventually it will pop, but not if you give up before it pops. Absolutely. Right yeah. on. Yeah. I've, I've, I've used that. And, and Keith, you're so right. During some of the darkest moments, what, what has kept you going other than the passion and your mission and purpose? Is there something else? Understand the, you know, the God part of it. Um, Man, I had, I, Ring, uh, I really went through the ringer, and nobody, like I said, nobody would ever know it because right. you're not supposed to. I don't think. Yep. I don't think. Let your crack show, you know. Um, but I, I went through the ringer where I had, you know, no money because all of the money was out in manufacturing, in marketing, and yep. you know, at family members. I have friends. When are you gonna get a damn job? You know, yeah. you doing <laughs> prices for you. Where is the money? When are you gonna start helping up? When are you going to do this? When are you going to do that? Everybody else has this. Johnny has a car. Where's your car at? You know, Johnny has this place to live at. Why you live at? You know, and I had to battle with self-esteem issues, self-worth issues. There was the, the race issues. Um, But what kept me going was first doing affirm well, lots of prayer, but lots of affirmations. Every day I would go in the mirror, I'm the spiciest man in the world. I'm the Duke of Delicious. I'm the Kaiser Curry, the man who invented cooking. You know, I would talk all of this stuff, not in an arrogant way, but in a way to counteract all of the negative that I was feeling from the outside, which I was beginning to let seep in. If we're not caref careful, the weight of the world can can seep in on us, but we just got to shake it off and, and, and step above it. Um, it. That reminds me of the story of the, the, go the farmer and the goat. Have you heard that story? <laughs> Tell it again. I love it. Love it. So, uh, so in, a, in a short way, there's a story about a farmer and a goat. Once again, there's something about these damn farmers, but there was a farmer. He lived out <laughs> in Minnesota somewhere, 
and he had this goat, and it was a good goat. You know, every day the farmer would, would wake up and he would cook him, you know, eggs and bacon, but he would use a little Spice King seasonings on his food, and he would get him the, the grass and the greens and sprinkle it with a little Spice King seasonings, and the goat was getting fat and happy. But then one one day, for, for some reason, the, the farmer thought, hey, I'm getting tired of feeding this damn goat. I got to pay for all these spices. I got to pay for all these meals, and, you know, maybe it's better if I cook them. But he didn't have the heart to cook them outright, but what he did is said he'll kill them over time. So he took the goat. Threw him at the bottom of the well. He was in a low place. And every day, the farmer, instead of showering him with love, the farmer would come out there and throw dirt on him. Eventually, the, the goat began to be buried. And the weight <laughs> of the dirt was so heavy on him, he was about to give up and hit the ground. But he sneezed, you know, and he was able to shake it off. He's like, hey, I, I was able to shake it off. Anyway, every day, he would, the farmer would throw dirt on him and he would shake it off. Throw dirt, shake it off. And eventually, he was able to step outside because he did not let the weight pummel him down. He shook it off, stepped out. And before you know it, he was able to step out of the well. He ended up meeting some other female goats and stuff. You know, they had some children and they continued using Spice King seasonings. And that's the story about the farmer and the goat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, John Miller, the paving lady, told me that story, but it's a little different. But I, I like those versions. <laughs> All these stories. <laughs> Oh my God, that's hysterical. But more of the story is that's what I, I remember that. Story. And he just said that he, you have to not let the weight of the world collapse you. You got to shake it off and stay in your own lane. Don't look at what everybody else is doing. You do what you're supposed to do. Stay in your lane and eventually it will happen. It may not be tomorrow and it may not be next year. In fact, so it just took me four years to get my first um, grocery store account, but I was at every damn farmer's market, knocking on doors, selling, doing all the videos, showing up at all the events. It was very tiring. I was doing all kind of catering stuff, but you know, now I have the lifestyle where I want, where I live right on the ocean, and I'm, I'm growing, and I'm still not comfortable. You can never be complacent. Never. You have to keep being innovative, and that's what we strive to do. Man, you could definitely teach business classes classes on entrepreneurship. Maybe you're doing that right now. Um, I don't know if you can go to a four-year college, master's degree from the finest universities. They can teach you that in class, but you are a real-life, real-world example of somebody that has found mission and purpose and is certainly inspiring <laughs> to Kelly and I and everybody that's going to be watching this. Wow, what a hell of a story, man. But everybody has these gifts that are built You're right. as gifts. But, you know, we have to learn to recognize the gifts. And then yep. through joy and passion, whatever brings you joy, whatever makes you smile. For me, it's flavors and food. I love making food. It tastes amazing. I just love that experience. And to be able to do it on a global scale, is, it was always my dream. And I still have some dreams that, that are in the works, which is you know, working in television and doing little cooking shows on TV, you know, but the whole world is changing. Whatever the universe has for me, that's what I'll do. But um, I'm going to keep it moving like that. And there, then there was there was other hurdles along the way, too, where that transition from being a one man band to learning how to hire people and pay for services, pay people, um, keep people motivated doing your accounting work you know math and me was never best friend i mean i took the same math class like five times in college you know <laughs> it wasn't even you know trigonometry type of class it was like algebra or something you know just stop, not my number but when it comes to other things i'm fantastic but i had to learn to find people that were better than i am in those fields and being comfortable outsourcing a lot of a lot of businesses want to do everything think they can do everything themselves but you can't at a certain point, it's going to be too much. You can't do all the marketing and the spice mix and the product mixing and the bottling, packaging, selling, and the books and the meetings. It's just a lot. How can you do it all? Right. But right. being a control freak and a successful control freak, it's hard to give it up. But obviously, you, huh? you've been able to tap into that. Yeah. I, there's a lot of people that do stuff way better than I do. I'm yeah. the best at making flavors but there's a lot of people that you know run them numbers better than me you know can can move faster than me with shipping and you know and that's what i'm going to do in fact i'm revamping my whole online operation and that was another hurdle um you got to pay attention to what's going on you always have to be cognizant there was a 
situation where, you know, I wasn't getting all of the resources from my website and stuff because I had outsourced it and I wasn't paying attention to the books. And there was a lot of money that was falling through the cracks. You got to pay attention. Um, hey, Keith, Keith, I got a question for you. Do, do you, obviously the genius move you made was, was the product that you brought to market, the spices. Um, but also, you know, the world is full of educated fools. So would you also say that an equally genius move that you made was your ability to surround yourself with people that can execute your vision for you, with you, and together? It, there's no other way. Yep. You know, we're all connected, interconnected. You have to have, it has to be a team effort. It has to be a group effort. You can't do everything yourself. Amen. Right. Well, listen, it's, it's we're, our time's out, but, and, and it's amazing. I seem like we just started a minute ago and it just freaking flies, but That's I knew fine. it was going to be like that. I knew we were going to have a blast with having you on the show. I appreciate you sharing your experiences, your vision. People can find you on, how, what's, your, what's your Instagram? I know I follow you, but what what is it? So you can find me on Instagram at The Spice King. My website is spicekingworld.com. And you you're can find on me. LinkedIn? Uh, yes, I'm on LinkedIn as Keith Loren. L-O-R-R-E-N, which I'll put that out on, on our, our stuff. Yeah. But, uh, um, you know, we, we love the fact that your passion, your 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 talents have also come to paying your bills and, and, and giving you a great life and, and giving other people a great life and a great experience. You know, I was telling my team this morning, we have a, a monthly meeting and uh, Daniel goes, you know, can you get us some free sauce? I'm like, come on. <laughs> That's so cheesy. But, but he's great. Daniel's in his mid twenties. He's got a wonderful girlfriend. He's a great project manager for our team. And he, but he's, I see your passion and his passion are, are very similar where, you know, I, me, I throw a burger on and I put a little garlic salt and I throw it on a bun and I keep on going. I, I'm, I'm not, my stomach doesn't allow me to be a connoisseur of, of your food as much as I'd love it to do. But Daniel is one of these guys who puts everything into what he does. And, you know, I, and it was, he got excited knowing that you were going to be on the show. And then, but then he, then he also went for the, Hey, can you get us some salt? So I, I'll buy him some, but uh, <laughs> we really appreciate your passion and, 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 and we, we look forward to hearing more about your success. Um, you know, as time goes on. That's amazing. I appreciate you guys so much. And I want all the viewers to be encouraged and just, you know, stay in your own lane, shake off the haters, shake off the negativity, be patient. Your, your bamboo will sprout, but you got to keep watering it. You got to keep going and you have to find ways of continuing to be innovative and creative and learn to outsource. It's okay to outsource. You can't do everything. Now, those were my lessons. And then the most important lesson in it all is to love yourself. Love yourself. Hug yourself. Oh, I love you, brother. Comments. Love you, brother. Thank you for everything. That That's was right. awesome. Thanks so much. Right. Have a wonderful day. Have a great day, you guys. All Have right. a I love it. <laughs> what a great way to close.